Good afternoon and uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Condo Insider on Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, my name is Jane Sugimura and I'm your host for the show today. And, you know, I wanted to start, you know, a series of uh, shows about resources for condominiums and because uh, there are lots of resources out there. And so, you know, I want to start with uh, a pretty unique one. And this involves resident managers and site managers. It's a group called Mo'ili'ili Resident Managers Association or MRMA, M-R-M-A. And it was started by a guy named Mike Venable. And he was a uh, property manager in Mo'ili'ili over 20 years ago. And I know I got a call uh, during uh, his on one of his early meetings to come out and give a le- legislative update. And we used to meet at his condominium and it started off with just the property managers from the neighborhood. Uh, now, uh, before, the, before the COVID hit, uh, Murma was meeting, they were having their monthly meetings at the Waikiki Yacht Club. And, you know, sometimes I mean, they'd have almost 100 guys there, men and women, sorry, men and women, uh, property managers, site managers, all networking, uh, learning from each other, sharing information. And it's a really, you know, dynamic and uh, active group. And so I wanted to highlight, you know, you know some of uh, uh, their activities. Uh, so that's why I wanted to talk to them, uh, talk about them uh, today. Uh, so. Anyway, this is a, a, a property management, a property managers uh, group, and they have a website, and I think we can show it. At, uh, we, we can show it on, on the screen now. And so uh, I think, and it, it, you, can we show this, the, uh, the, the name of the website? How do you get to it? www.merma. It's, yeah, mrma.org. And so I, I know that they're having some meetings virtually, but you know what they do is they have um, they have police officers, uh, you know, from their area show up, and they give status reports, and and the police are there, you know, to take questions and uh, answer uh, concerns that property managers um, may you know may have, and what what they do basically is they share information. And you know, if 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 your site manager or resident manager um, has a problem, I mean, it, it, rather than try to resolve it himself, I mean, there's this huge network, and uh, I I don't know the membership, but I know I've been to their meetings, and they have a lot of people who show up, and uh, they're involved with you know vendors in the community, like you know the 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 people who want your business. Uh, you know, the, if, if, you're, you're, if you join this organization and you go to their luncheon meetings, you will meet the vendors. I mean, the people who do the, the, the waterproofing and the painting and the structural engineers and, and, uh, and, and, and cleaning services and um, the landscapers. And so, and, and you can talk, you know, to, to your, you know, to the, 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 your site manager can talk to his counterparts in other buildings and compare war stories about who's good and who's bad. And, and you know, <coughs> that's, you know, really important. That's really important, you know, for, for, um, for associations uh, because it's not like, you know, you're, you're flying blind. I mean, you, you know, you're sharing information and these vendors know, they know that this organization is connected and that they network with each other. And they know that if they can establish a foothold in this organization, that they're going to be, you know, the, 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 their uh, reputation and work is, uh, is going to spread uh, to uh, other associations. And this is, this is really important because, you know, the, a site manager, or a resident manager, they can't know everything. And although many of them, you know, take classes and, uh, you know, they get certifications from Community Associations Institute and from IGRAM, 
and um, we, which is another uh, resource organization for uh, site managers and, and resident managers. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to pick up a phone and you know, call somebody who, who's in this group and say, hey, I got a swimming pool problem. So, you know, can you, you know, refer me to somebody who can help me out with this particular problem I'm having? And, you know, so, so, so you know, this type of network uh, is, is useful and it probably will uh, minimize, you know, some of the, the, the problems that would occur is if you had to go out and hire somebody blind without, you know, uh, any uh, background. And uh, you're, the um, the membership, the membership is all property managers, property managers and, and site managers. And they get together uh, and they discuss problems. And um, I know that um, they've been uh, really active in uh, things, I, uh, let me see. One of the things that they were really active in Murma was the establishment of a bulky item pickup program in Honolulu. And those, you know, those of you, you know, who um, remember in the city, the city and county about a year ago, uh, they did a whole revamp. And, and Murma was very instrumental in doing this because you had a whole lot of property managers coming together and, and saying, you know, look, these are the issues we're having. And, uh, and, 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 and the city officials, uh, some of the city officials, you know, end up at the Murma meetings. And so the, the Murma uh, members worked with the city and county uh, Department of Environmental Services to set up some parameters. And those parameters were vetted at the city. And I think, I mean, I know we went through a, um, a trial period uh, maybe a year ago, where we were dealing with new rules and regulations. And it started on the east side of the island, I think in, in Hawaii Kai. And uh, they were trying it out before it, you know, and, and after they worked out the kinks, uh, they, you know, uh, they applied those rules uh, to uh, other parts of the island. But I think the uh, the key thing about the bulky item pickups is that there, uh, you have to call in now. There no more, you know, the, the, they don't set it up so that on a Wednesday they're in Pearl City. Uh, so now you have to call in uh, because I, 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 I'm not sure why that is, but it, it, it probably is because it was inefficient for the city uh, to do that. So now they're doing it on a, a on-call basis. And then that way they can get the, the trucks out there, you know, it, it, and you have to tell them whether it's, you know, small stuff or big stuff. If it's big stuff and if it's metal, like a refrigerator, because they have special trucks that come out just for the big metal stuff. And, you know, uh, and, and so if you've got a couch, they can send, a, you know, maybe like a flatbed. But if it's a metal refrigerator or a stove or, or, or something like that, they have to send out a different truck with different um, uh, people uh, so that they could deal with, 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 with that uh, uh, type of um, uh, uh, item, the bulky item uh, uh, pickups. And, uh, and one of the other things that they've done uh, they were involved in new schools, uh, zone signs in and around uh, Kuhio Elementary School, and they increased patrolling by HPD, particularly in the side streets, in the community where our children play and our elderly walk to and from buildings. And um, there's a monthly sponsorship program by businesses and vendors who attend the Murma meetings to make presentation of their products and services and to meet other members of MoMA. Now, this is very, very important because, uh, you know, uh, I know with property managers, they get inundated with materials and, you know, you, you get flyers and, and, and you get, you know, um, uh, solicitations about different products. 
but at the MRMA meetings, you actually can have the vendors will show the vendors will show up. They'll show up with their products. They'll show up. They'll give demonstrations. They will answer questions. And you know, this is one of well, this is one of the um, uh, plus factors, I guess. You know, being a member because you you get to you know talk to the the vendors, see their products, ask the questions, and and decide whether or not you know uh, you want to use their product. And this would be, you know, products, you know, that you would want to use uh, in your building. It could be cleaning products, you know, that you would use in your building, or maybe, uh, you know, for, for your landscaping, it would it would be, you know, fertilizer. It might even be, uh, you know, a different plants that you can plant in your area, depending on, you know, whether you get a lot of rain or whether it's real dry. And, you know, so, you know, these, these are things, you know, that uh, uh, are the day-to-day -day business of site managers. And this is what also, you know, makes your buildings, more add, adds value to your buildings. You know, if you have a site manager who is 100%, uh, you know, committed, you know, to uh, making your condominium a better place uh, to live and work and and at the same time improving the value of it so that you know for for those people who are selling their units it means that you get a better price and so you know it's, it's really important uh that you know site managers and resident managers have these uh resources and uh, and one of the and, and one of the resources is that you know you provide them with an opportunity uh, for them to meet vendors and to meet other property managers and site managers and to meet other people in the industry uh, uh, so th to, to so that they can uh, you know if, if they have a particular problem that they can't handle that they have the resources and they're not going to you know have to you know hunt around for them. I mean, they can just look at the membership uh, or, or, or just contact somebody in the group who may have had a, a problem. And um, uh, so, so this is one of the, uh, the benefits. And, and I understand that um, this is not something where you pay dues. Uh, uh, you, you can join, if you're a property manager, you can join. And um, the, uh, on the website, there, there is a source where you can contact them and 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 join the organization and and become a part of this and uh, reap the benefits and the benefit and 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 and, and your um, and your participation is also going to benefit your condominium because you're going to bring the knowledge and the networking and all of the resources that you you know get you know, from being part of this organization, you're going to bring that back home. And it's going to benefit uh, the condominium uh, where you, you know, where you, where you live or work. And uh, and another thing that they do, besides, you know, sharing uh, information about products, the way I got involved, uh, I used to go and give the legislative update. And so uh, every year I would go and, and, and tell them what the legislature ha had done or uh, the city and county. And, and uh, Murma was very active in the uh, fire safety ordinance that was passed uh, after the Marco Polo fire. And so their input was very valuable. Uh, in informing the ordinance, and you know the 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 one thing, uh, I guess you would call it uh, an impediment. But you know we had a mayor who really wanted to install sprinklers, and those of us who live in condominiums, we know that retrofitting an older building is really expensive. It's really expensive, and it, it's kind of ugly. I mean, because you, you know the building's already built. And so if you're going to put in pipes, you're going to have to put in pipes, you know, outside of the concrete, which means you're going to have pipes in your, your unit. And so it's not very pretty. 
And so uh, it's not aesthetically pleasing, but you know, there is, uh, it's a safety factor. And so I guess you have to strike a balance uh, and say, well, it might look nice, but at least, you know, it's safer. And so, uh, but anyway, our mayor back then wanted sprinklers and there were some condominium people, including people in Murma, who were very active and vocal and went to the city council and say, hey, wait, uh, you've got to give us a choice. Uh, we know we cannot stop the sprinklers, but you know, you got to give us a choice uh, because you know, we have people who live in the condominiums who don't want sprinklers. They don't want to pay for them. Uh, they don't think they need them. Uh, and so you need to give us a choice. And that's how come we have now a life safety evaluation and it's not perfect and we're still struggling uh, trying to figure out how to work, you know, work with it. Um, uh, we're just starting to, you know, uh, you know, to finish with the life safety evaluations and, and we're, we're all beginning to see what has to be done and how expensive it's all going to be. And but you know, uh, so 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 compliance, and it, you know, so so if you're a member of Murma, you're going to hear from the experts, and you're going to hear from government officials about new laws, and what what they're well new laws that they're planning to implement, and 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 you know the people at Murma have been active in in voicing their support or their. Uh, not disapproval, but concern. And I think that's a good thing because, you know, uh, a lot of times government, government officials, I mean, they really don't know how condominiums work. They don't uh, seem to appreciate the fact that, you know, if they pass laws, uh, the people who live in the condominiums end up paying for the, you know, paying for uh, the implementation. And just like, you know, with the fire safety, uh, uh, ordinance, those of us who don't want to do sprinklers have to pay to install some expensive equipment. And, and yes, uh, it is something that we didn't have to do, but now we have to do because of the ordinance. And so Murma is, is a forum where government officials will go uh, to talk to them about new legislation, uh, new regulations uh, to try to get their support or find out what concerns them uh, because um, uh, they know that, you know, the implementation is going to be very difficult. And, you know, once it's, once the law is passed, uh, then, you know, Murma is one of the groups that, you know, they look to for, you know, a feedback. Like how how's it working? I mean, it may, can, is there something we can change? And you know, laws and regulations that are passed by the government—they're not set in concrete. And I, I've been around long enough to know that if something's not working, you need to go to your government official and say, "Hey, you know, you guys pass this law, and it's just you know very burdensome. And so, can you tweak it, or can you change it? Can you repeal it?" Can you do you know something, you know, so that it's not so you know it, it's it's not so uh, burdensome for those of us who who have to comply with it, and so that's another thing that you know Murma does. It it it, it helps in the implementation of uh, I mean it's it's one of the groups that the uh, government goes to before they decide they're going to pass an ordinance or a bill. Uh, because they kind of want feedback, and uh, and 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 also they want to get reelected, and they they know that if if they get us mad enough, that you know those things are not going to happen, and uh, so 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 Murma is one of those groups you know that are involved in uh, implementation of, um, of 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 new laws, and. <laughs> You know, with uh, and, and also with this, uh, I, I was hoping I would have somebody from Roma on our program today because I was interested in, in finding out how they dealt with uh, the challenges 
from the COVID pan, uh, pan, uh, pan, uh, pandemic. And I know that uh, with a lot of associations, there was some confusion uh, as to, you know, what could you do? I mean, some associations were shutting down the pool uh, because, you know, it was a gathering place. And, and, it, and, it, and the decision to do that was basically on the board of directors and the site manager. And so the site manager had input. Usually the board would go to the site manager and say, hey, can we do this? And the site manager would have to uh, hunt and, and, and look and see if any of the government uh, uh, emergency proclamations affected you know, amenities that belong to uh, associations. And you know, I heard stories about, oh, you guys are private entities. You're not subject to the government regulations. That's not true. We are still part of the state of Hawaii, city and county of Honolulu. So if they say no gathering or you can't, uh, you can only have six people. I mean, that applies to condominiums as well. Uh, but, and, and the boards, you know, are, are also very concerned about the spread of this, you know, virus. I mean, you don't want a building that's, you know, um, that's just, you know, contagious with this disease uh, because that's just not a healthy place, you know, for all, all these people to live. And so it was a real uh, challenge, I think, you know, to uh, condominium site managers and resident managers. And if your building survived the panic, the, the pandemic, 18 months now and in a relatively healthy situation, uh, I would, you know, give my kudos to your site manager because I'm pretty sure they had to work really hard uh, to make sure that, um, uh, you know, that the, that the emergency orders were complied with. And now we're dealing with issues of vaccine mandates and whether or not employees and contractors uh, will have to uh, comply uh, with uh, vaccine mandates that the board may adopt because the board is an employer. They employ the staff and they can set parameters just like any other employ em employer, like the state of Hawaii says that, you know, if you don't have a vaccine, you can't work for the state or you have to have a negative test result. And so associations can do the same. So, so the challenges, you know, continue to be there. And, you know, uh, for, the, for those associations who are interested, you might want, and, and if your site manager or resident manager is not a member, you might want to encourage them to join MRMA. And so, you know, look at the website, it's www.mrma go to the website and you know see what you can do to become a member of this organization i i've i've, I've known them i i knew mike venable 20 years ago and i really have to give him credit for starting this organization and who knew back then that over 20 years later it would be as vigorous and um as influential as, as it is today and so uh that concludes my first episode about resources for condominiums. And my next uh, episode when, when, when I will be speaking, uh, when I do the show, we're gonna have the Real Estate Commission and they've got a terrific website and they've got videos now. And you know, so, so please tune into that program. It's gonna be September 30th. And uh, we're going to have a, a, a condominium, condominium specialist uh, who will be telling us all about all of their programs. And that's a one-shop deal. You go to their, their website and everything is there. So thank you very much for joining me today. And, uh, uh, and please make sure that you join us next week uh, for another episode of Condo Insider. And join us on September 30th for the uh, Real Estate Commission and uh, a continuation of my shows on condominium resources. Thank you, mahalo.